Hello. In this brief video, I'm going to be discussing external tibial torsion and the uh, approach to correction, if that should be considered indicated. First of all, let's consider limb symmetry. We know that hip rotation is generally symmetrical, whereas the uh, lower limb part of the limb and the tibia and the foot tends to be asymmetrical and we tend to turn to the right. So that internal tibial torsion will generally mean that it's on the left side of the child. And whereas we have external tibial torsion, it is generally on the right side of the individual. So this is a clear drift to the right side, which is a human characteristic. First of all, most intoying is be gets better on its own, we consider with a happy face. But in childhood and adolescent, outtoying can actually get worse with time, which is unusual for torsional problems. And the reason for that is because of the natural history of tibial torsion, which we discussed before. And if you look at the normal values, the tibia externally rotates. It goes from an internal rotated position to externally rotated. And this happens throughout childhood, up to about 12 or 15. So the natural history is for external tibial torsion to worsen with time. The uh, these can then sometimes cause problems, not only with gait and difficulties with getting through narrow spaces and so forth, but also with other problems that have been associated with external tibial torsion. For instance, osteochondritis desiccans is an example. Or of increased incidence of osgood slaughter disease is another example, perhaps because of the changed mechanics of the leg. Now, if one needs to or wants to correct this, how do you do it? Well, we looked at the issue and, and studied the results at Children's Hospital over a 20, 20, 30 year period. And because we had done osteotomies, the same institution for idiopathic torsion, both at the proximal and distal levels. And I might add in early in the series, before we knew that the, the natural history of tibial torsion, a lot of osteotomies done for internal tibial torsion. And they were done proximally. And there was a 13% complication rate with nerve and, uh, and uh, compartment syndromes. Whereas later on, when we were more uh, educated and when we did uh, just a fewer osteotomies only for external tibial torsion, we had 13 osteotomies. And there were basically no, none of these serious complications. So we think that if, it's, if you're going to do an osteotomy, it's best to do it at the distal level. Well, what are the indications for correction? Well, first of all, it should cause some sort of disability, either in the function or if it's particularly severe cosmetically, or if the thigh foot angle is more than 30 degrees in most cases out. And if it's unilateral, we want to make the, the foot progression angle relatively the same on both sides. Or if it's bilateral, we want to make it into an acceptable range, usually 10 to 15 degrees out is nice. Now, in deciding how much to turn the tibia, the degree of hip rotation may influence it. So if the person has aniversion or retroversion, and they're already turned out or turned in, then that may influence the amount of rotation that's necessary you feel for correction. And finally, using monitor pins above and below the rotation is helpful to assure one gets the right amount of correction. So how is it done? Well, first of all, uh, it's uh, done with the, at the distal tibial level, the leg is draped free so you can see the whole leg during the operative period. And through an anterior lateral incision, the, uh, the distal tibia and the fibula are exposed. The first step is to do an osteotomy, oblique osteotomy of the fibula. And this long oblique to give as much contact surface as possible because one of the risks is possibly a non-union. This doesn't they unite very well as part of the tibia. The second is to do the tibial osteotomy well above the growth plate also putting in pins above and below that are spread by the number of degrees that you want to look you want a correction you kind of look down actually down the leg to measure this and then the third step is to do the actual rotation of the tibia bring these pins into into a parallel situation and keep the alignment okay and then one can finally advance the pins to fix the osteotomy and the degree of rotation is desired so and again in summary this we do the osteotomy with the leg draped free, and you can see the pins above and below. We, we then do the osteotomy. We bring the correction into normal. You can see this wants to be symmetrical. And you get an x-ray that shows this alignment is good and the, and the apposition is good. 
and and the good apposition here. And then we recommend that the CAS be bivalve distally. And this is combined with a with a subcutaneous um, fasciotomy of the anterior lateral compartment done intraoperatively. Uh, some people have elected to avoid the long leg cast by putting pins above uh, in through the proximal uh, tibia and into the cast, but I'm not sure this is justified in view of the extra scar and the extra complications. So this is the goal uh, of correction. So in review then, most problems of in, that are torsional get better spontaneously. Most are internal. External tibial torsion is a real exception. It worsens with growth. And it worsens because of the natural history. And it's sometimes associated with other problems in the limb. And if symptomatic and severe, one can consider operative correction. And this we feel it should be done by a tibial osteotomy performed distally and carefully monitored so that you get the right amount of correction. So I thank you for watching this video and please send me any comments. It's daily at uw.edu. And if you want to look at additional videos, see, go through or back to our website and see these at globalhelp.org. Thank you very much.